Okay, here's a little Hercus 260 carcass. Stripped it all down pretty much. Really just to kind of clean and inspect and uh, lubricate. Anytime I get a new machine, I like to go over it. So, so it's kind of uh, disassembled now and time to reassemble, which will be kind of fun. Probably just do the reverse of what I did to take it apart. Uh, there's another video on my channel here, all the disassembly, where all the screws and fasteners and everything are, so that I can, mostly so that I can refer to them when I want to get it put back together again. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'll film this, and uh, hopefully it's of use to someone taking their 260 apart as to where everything goes. I'm sure I'll make lots of mistakes along the way. So. Yeah, join the fun. Okay, we're going to start with the motor. It's kind of in a bad spot to film, but essentially this is the shaft that goes through here and supports the motor mount. Now it's a set screw that goes down into here that wasn't tightened uh, previously and the shaft that protruded out through here and uh, wasn't being held on the other end. So. That a little better. Put a little oil on here. Can't hurt. Get that ready to go. Slide in there that way. Let's see if we can get this bad boy to come up. Okay. One thing I was going to do is make a mark on this end so I can know which is up for that set screw. Yeah, so I'll just make a mark on the top. So that lines up with the set screw. Come on. Oh boy. That was not easy. I guess it wasn't tightened down before. So it's not easy to get at down there. Oh, we can see it down in there. Let me shine my drill light down there. See that down there, right about in there? belt here is an A30. So A is the width or the profile and 30 is the length. I'm not sure. About 30 centimeters. Anywho, put that on there first. Right here. And it has a flat on it. For now, set screw. So this one I think I will put a little bit of Adjuster rod. This one here has to go in there. Yeah. 
that marks the end. So we got the flap there, so we'll mark here. Before I lose this little tail, I want to make sure that my line is good on the other side here. Not so we'll turn that. Okay, oh, sorry, it's hard to hold this and do that. Okay, I think we got that straight up and down. Let's tap that. Adjustment for the over center thing right here. Let's see if I can get rough oil. Okay, so this end has a bushing going in here. doesn't turn but I just like to have a little lubrication on that. So that has a small pulley on the outside, big pulley on the inside. And the set screw here goes into the flat. Or we'll go on to the flat. Oops, Oops my key didn't I? Just pushing that right up against that bushing that's in there. It's a washer. And this little baby water pen. So I think the next thing I want to do, actually the next thing I want to do is put the gearbox on because it's gonna be way easier to get at these bolts, these cap screws, um, before I put the headstock on. Instead of the way I took it off first, then it was hard to get at. So. Okay, here's our gearbox. I cleaned this up and put a new little rubber pad on there. I don't know if that's going to help. Okay, well, that's happening. Let's have a look at the other side. Now, oiling this. Coming in here, 
goes through the gallery there over to this side. Obviously, lubricates there. There's a gallery way here, comes down here. Some wicks in there. Bring it over. Same thing on this side, galley way here, a couple of wicks there. What I don't get is how does the actual gear pieces get lubricated? I can put some oil in there, but I think something would lubricate them as they're in operation. And the only place that I can see where your oil is just in the top here, and that's like I say, introduces oil into all the galleyways. Okay, let's go again. to assemble all this on the bench but of course the belt has to go through all these things so you can't really put much together. I'll put some red paint on my oil locations here. Now as far as the location on here of course the ways are clean. There's paint underneath there but that's original that's what was there. I should take that off. I think as long as I get an exact location. I did scribe a little mark here. That's the leading edge of the headstock. It's pretty straightforward. It's got two screws from the bottom. Here they are. This cap screw comes from the front and uh, it gets a 15 millimeter socket. Not a 14. Okay, yeah, 15 millimeter. find out there's a bushing in there with a little piece of wire in it and I realized what that's for. It's kind of a neat idea. It's spring loaded. It's spring loaded over top as you slide it over when it reaches this little divot here. It catches so that the bushing doesn't turn. Should. 
actually turns. I don't know if that's very good. thing happen. So, this time we're pulling it this way. So that will walk it gets there. And I'm just going to use this big nut on this end.
dust cap or whatever you'd call it. Uh, popped out. I think I was pulling it a little bit crooked so it caught on there. So I just need to tap that back into place and get back on track. Okay, here's the trick. Can you see that little ledge right there? That, that shoulder on the spindle has to get through this aluminum end cap here. It's really close to uh, being on the other side of it when it engages the bowl, ge the bowl gear. So we need to get the bowl gear lined up on the keyway right here and started. Need to get sure this, this pin is locked into the appropriate spot on the pulley. And then I think we're going to start pulling and be some more successful. Pulling very easily. And the cap is staying where it's supposed to be. Very nice. Okay, now I've reached the bottom of the socket. Okay, I just need to close this little gap right here. So I've only got about 3 16ths to go. And I'm just going to set up a little different, a little different scenario here. Use this piece of two inch ABS pipe. I even remember to put the belt on. Pretty clever. Alright, so now we're going to put this monkey on here. Oh. A little resistance threading that on there. It seems to be threaded correctly. a little bit of resistance. comes apart because I put the wrong belt on here. This is the 30. This is a 
supposed to be. One with the damage here. This was the one that was going around here, and that's that's the 28. Darn it! Do the whole thing over again. Well, I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm going to just take this all apart and redo it again. I've got to change this belt up. What a boom pop. I Just wanted to have you back. I've just uh, disassembled this one more time. Changed the belt out because I had the wrong belt. There's a the one up here is a 28, and the one on the side runs to the motor up here is a 30, and I got that mixed up. So I got to do this whole exercise again. And in doing so, um, when I was pulling the the uh, spindle out again, I realized that I looked at this bull gear earlier, and I saw some damage on here. And I thought, oh, someone has pried on it or has done something to it. Um, but in fact, no, it was me that did that. Let's see here, uh, contact with the tooth here. I thought, well, what's going on? So when I was pulling it apart the second time, I realized as I was putting stress on the bull gear to get slide it off the shaft, it was actually bending a bit. It was, wasn't coming off true. Thought, what is causing that? So I started looking in here, and I discovered this. So this part of the casting right here actually interferes with the bull gear when you're pulling it off. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're pushing this way, right? And you're putting the stress on this way as you pull on the spindle. And that bull gear, you know, is supposed to come up against this bulkhead here and, and be forced off. But it actually comes up right up against here. So be careful of that. Uh, I'm not sure how much clearance is there in the beginning. Uh, this time when I realized that I'd already pulled it a little bit of the way, so I had room to put in um, I slid in a couple of pieces of key stock and I slid those down in here um, It's hard to do with one hand, but if you see what I mean and just to space that away from that little bit of a, a strengthening rib there in the on the casting so watch for that if you're taking apart your Hercus 260 spindle. Another thing I wanted to show you is this shoulder right here on your spindle um, easily catches on this aluminum, I don't know if it's a, if it's a bit of a dust cap or what have you, but as you're trying to get your spindle through here, make sure you get it started with the shoulder all the way through here before you start pulling on it. And of course, then you also need to get the keyway lined up on the bull gear. Keyway here lined up. And also, you need to have this pin into the appropriate hole here, either, either hole, I guess, but just so that it rides straight on this bull gear when you're pulling on it. Then you can apply some pressure. So I'm going to get set up to do that again. You've seen all that, so I'll have you back. I'm going to get this thing pulled in the final time, hopefully. Okay, we got it pulled back in again. Disassemble all this again. Disassemble all this again. Pull everything apart. Put it all back together. I got the right belt here, and I got the right belt here. So now I need to just... Uh, continue putting a spindle together. So that'll be the end caps will go on. And we'll do that right now. Okay, so now I need to put on the locking collar here. It's going to tension up the bearings. I'm 
using this set screw here to grab onto with its collet wrench. Not ideal, but seems to do the trick. how I'm going to tell when I get tension on it. What I'll do is I'll spin on the five inch chuck here. spindle down so that I can put a little heat on this end here. And with the larger distance actually goes this way. Drop that in there. Okay, this handle <clears throat> I broke when I was taking it apart with excessive use of hammer. Um, so I welded this handle back on, which looked beautiful, but as you all know, welding cast iron doesn't go so smoothly, so it broke off again. So then I just used some epoxy, some JB weld on it. I don't know if that's going to last either, but I'm going to go ahead and assemble it. It can be a project for later.
brass. Gizmo. Now it's going in there. So remember, this was the piece I forgot to take out originally. A slot that that goes into right there. That stops that from, stops that from hitting here. Stops it from hitting there. It's like magic. Okay. Okay, now I'll tighten this down more. I feel a little resistance here. Oops. assemble this little color. Uh, this one, the felts that were in here were in bad shape, so... Uh, yeah, so these are the little felts that were in these holes. Let's see why we can't make a new one.
has a felt in there. Now this, this guy here is broken. There's a little shoulder on here that's actually stuck up inside of here. So, future project. Fortunately, my camera quit on me there. The SD card got full, but I just uh, finished up this gearing in here at the banjo position. back in time to see it start.
noise going forward. I think that's because of the wear on this gears here, but anyway. That's perfect way right there like that. It's lined up. 7.2 millimeter by 28 inches. Uh, special special little wrench for that. Gonna put these little felts and the caps on. I won't bore you with that, I'll have you back when we're done. Alright, this is just ready to uh, set on there. I did put on the little felt and felt holders. I just haven't tightened them down yet. I think first I want to put on the rack. It'll be easier to get at. So that's going to go in here. I had to make a couple of screws <clears throat> we're missing. It was down to two screws being held on by two, two of these little screws. So I picked up some of these. They're stainless. I had to modify the heads a little bit. They were a little bit too big. So I sanded them down. There's still enough to grip an Allen key in there. And I'm going to put a little drop of Loctite on them too. Much thread catches in here. I sanded these down just a little bit more off the heads. felt. 
And then we got this piece going on the back here. Other side. Locate some uh, shims to put in there. Either way, it's fine. If any of you were looking for a video of how to take these aprons apart, sorry, but there are quite a few. Uh, I have seen at least a couple different ones um, on the South Bend lathe, and they seem to me to be very similar. So this one, I just didn't see any reason to take it apart. I'm going to. Uh, there's lots of lubrication in here. It's got a bit of oil in there now. So, put this little cover plate back on here. This guy. Have a little paper gasket in there. And um, coming out of the cleaner, a little paper gasket is fine. So, I can reuse that. I'm just going to put a little bit of silicone. It's already been compressed, so I don't know how much ceiling power it has left so this is a bit of silicone. Again, I gotta put the lock on first. Okay, I've got the lead screw to put in. Open. This 
guy, we have to get that keyway. Put the compound on. So I'll put these little dogs in here. I think I can put them in from this side. I want to make sure I get them the right side up. That's all. This is like feel air it goes right in the hole. those little dogs
tool post is going to be temporary because uh, I'm going to change this. But I need to make a need to make a new shaft for the tool holder. And in order to do that, I need the lathe to do that. So I'll just pop this one back in. I removed the I removed the little uh, indent ident indent spring-loaded pin that locks into the top of this to position it. Yeah, that's okay. I don't need it for this. I didn't even clean this up, but you know what? It's going to be temporary. tail stock to put on. I didn't clean that up yet so I'll do that in the future. Thread so chaser here is symmetric lathe so it has the three to, three gears. Try. Running nice and quiet. Speed is working. pretty noisy it's all in this crazy loose gears I've got going on here so what I have done is I've ordered a new reverse gear reverse lever and the shaft that goes through it they're all available still so I got those are coming from Australia so that'll tighten all this gear train up and I ordered a new spindle so because of the wear in these gears here some of my chatters come in there too. So 
I should be able to quiet all that up. And just before I end this video, I wanted to mention one thing that I've discovered, or I believe I've discovered. Um, when I was putting in the spindle and tensioning up the bearings, <clears throat> what I found is it's, I think because of the wear in the roller bearings, there is no way to um, get tension on them or preload them if there's worn because uh, everything is fixed here. You've got fixed uh, uh, bulkheads here on the headstock and then all of these, you know, the spur gear, the pulleys, and there's a spacer in the back here. Uh, they have an, you know, an existing width and they take up room between the two cones of the bearing. So even though you want to tension here, it actually tensions the cone of the bearing up against all of these infill on the spindle. And so it doesn't allow you to actually tension the bearings of the spindle. So I think that's because of the, the wear on the uh, tapered bearings. So I did re uh, order some tapered bearings and a spindle as well for a different reason, just because of this gear. And, um, and I'll, I'll re reinstall this one more time just for fun, just for practice. And I suppose if I wasn't going to do all that, what a person could do is there is a bushing in here and you could turn that down a bit to give some clearance so that you could then tension the bearings up. The way I noticed that is I, when I had the end caps off, I did run this up just to see how the spindle was working, was working properly and smoothly. And I could hear the, uh, the uh, I guess you call it the cage or the roller cage on the bearing rattling a little bit on this end. And I got in there with the pick and it was loose and the uh, rollers were actually loose even though I had this tensioned up fairly tight um, you know, in the, on the spindle here. So pretty sure uh, my problem is the bearings are worn. Even though they run smooth, they're worn. So I will soon know. If that doesn't fix it, then like I said, I will have to machine down this bushing a little bit, which doesn't seem like I should have to do that. So. So that's uh, yet to be done. So that's the uh, assembly, disassembly, Hercus 260. Thanks for watching. Hopefully it helped you uh, locate piece, parts and pieces. I still have one washer to find out where it goes. Um, but that's pretty happy with it so far. I think replacing those uh, parts that I'm talking about should quiet it down pretty good. And everything else in this lathe is in really nice shape. So. It should last me for my lifetime. Okay, thanks for watching.